From tape to tape, problems of long-term storage of animal sounds. As a vocalizing animal, humans are fascinated by technologies to conserve and replay speech and music. Encoding music by scores has a long history. It was even used by Eurasian in the 19th century and others to document animal sounds by scores, as you see by this example of musical notes representing grasshopper songs. Technological innovations during the 20th century, such as microphones and tape recordings, helped to establish bioacoustics as a new branch of zoology. Here you see the huge optical film recorder used by Peter Kellogg in 1935 to record the mysterious ivory woodpecker from Florida, providing one of the very few recordings of sounds from this majestic and probably extinct species. The next slide shows David Ragge in the field recording grasshoppers using a microphone and the famous Naga tape recorder which from 1960 and subsequent decades were the gold standard. Today's latest development are digital recorders, including programmable automatic recorders, for example the cheap audio moth recorder, which allowed passive acoustic monitoring in generating a data avalanche of acoustic data, even covering ultrasound with bats and moths. Open source sound analysis software now runs on a laptop or even a smartphone. The new field of ecoacoustics emerged, analyzing entire soundscapes, collecting petabytes of environmental sounds directly in digital format. To store them permanently, permanently is a huge challenge and will not be possible with full web access. Rather cold storage is necessary. The only storage medium at the moment available would be digital tapes. So again we are back to tapes as a long-term storage medium, not analog but digital, hence probably more sensitive because you need the adequate reading device. But let's stay with traditional recordings of individual species. Meanwhile, most large sound archives digitized considerable amounts of analog tape, including metadata like locality, time step, temperature, etc. In Germany, the situation is a bit different because there are several big museums, not only Berlin, housing large collections and even a greater number of university and privately tape collections due to a long tradition of studies in orthoptera, bioacoustics and neuroethology. Therefore, in 2000, we presented an application to the German Federal Ministry of Education and Science uh, for a specimen-based database of important orthoptera collections held in German museums and recordings at universities to be digitized and published as a virtual museum and to our surprise got substantial funding for three years. Tapes were digitized by experts Siegfried English and Klaus Gerhard Heller, starting with their own recordings and then continuing with a wide variety of types from various sources, inclusive university collections. The result was a virtual museum and phonotique with 28,000 images and 4,000 sounds. Meanwhile, most digitized audios are accessible via the World Wide Web and several even connected to GBIF Global Biodiversity Information Facility. They can find them when filtering for multimedia sound content. So here you see an impressive number of more than one million audio occurrences offered via GBIF. Now a flood of more than a million are from human observations from citizen science provided by Xeno Canto and iNaturalist. However, there are only 32k insect recordings. If you filter for insect you see 
that the number of recordings is shrinking. Again, uh, the citizen, sci citizen scientists are leading. However, these observations are not substantiated by a voucher specimen. So you see leading is uh, the Systax database and the Leibniz Institute for Analysis of Biodiversity, which is basically the Museum König now, and the Museum of Biological Diversity, uh, Ohio Borough Sound Collection. So behind these is basically the DOSA data set. So if you search in GB4 dataset, you see uh, that um, Systax is providing the Dosa German Orthoptera collection and uh, the ZFMK is providing a copy of MP3 files of the sound collection. However, not all databases are connected to GBIF. There are several important ones uh, which are most useful and not connected. For example here the Sina Singing Insects of North America uh, database pro uh, hosted by Tom Walker Florida State Collection of Arthropods uh, covering nearly all the crickets of North America but interestingly not the grasshoppers, the acridids, which is a huge gap of knowledge. In addition, recordings are available via the Orthoptera species file, which is covering the latest taxonomy, but unfortunately is not connected to GBIF. Anyway, it is a most useful resource with pictures combining voucher specimens with the sound recordings. So here you see uh, our new species Eulophophilum lobulatum described in 2016 based inter alia on a voucher specimen and a field recording from the 1990s which are made in Borneo in the 1990s. Now the bad news is that uh, GBIF sounds nice but if you drill into the links, you will see that some of the multimedia links are not functional. For example, if you drill into this interesting cricket from Ecuador and you try to download media, you end up here. Uh, the page is not found. There's a Perl script at the University of Ulm, but it is not functional, site not found. So let's have a closer look what happened to Systax. Uh, these Systax data now are now as a ghost in a cache and provided via GBIF, but of course uh, is still some um, data are uh, found. Unfortunately, the curator Jürgen Hoppe died in 2021 uh, and since then the database was switched off by the new head of the department. So comprehensive database system went lost and our efforts to restore the data were in vain. It's a complex Oracle database which is rather difficult to dump. Fortunately we started at an early stage to provide linkages between Orthoptera species file and a DOSA now all these links of course are obsolete but as you have seen uh, the pictures and the most important recordings are available via Orthoptera species file. But not all which shows you that uh, 
data safety of digital data is still incomplete. So from there I see six major requirements for future digital sound archives. First, a sound metadata database compatible with GB Federation standards. A linkage to observation with geo-reference, locality and timestamp and voucher specimens if necessary, particularly for invertebrates where you have many voucher specimens which still await taxonomic description. A storage of original sound files without compression. An inclusion of metadata for downloaded files. So anybody who downloads acoustic files sees where they are from. And a reference to storage sites of the original analog types. An advice don't throw away the analog tapes. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>